Good morning, everybody. I feel like we're, uh, we're touching on all of the uh, different categories here, right? We started off with um, a little bit of airline, got into food, so now we're going to dig in with a little bit of tech. So uh, thank you again to Brand Innovators for organizing, and I'm very lucky to just be able to come downstairs to do this <laughs> chat. Um, so thank you, uh, Kristen, for joining us. Um, before we get into questions, like, why don't you just tell us a little bit about uh, your job, maybe your career, personal, whatever you're comfortable sharing. Sure, sounds good. And hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, and thank you also to Brand Innovators for having, uh, having me today and for all of you for hopefully what will be a fun conversation for the next 30 minutes. So uh, as Ryan said, I'm Kristen McHugh. I lead uh, creative and marketing activation at Verizon. So what that is, is all of the creative from uh, above the line, think all of our TV spots to everything in channel. Uh, I'm looking at Warren here who uh, helped stand up our in-house agency. So that includes our in-house agency, uh, which who leads all of our retail, all of our digital, all of .com. And uh, we work very closely with our business partners on uh, developing our value propositions into consumer insight and everything that you see in market for Verizon. So I've been at Verizon for 11 years. Uh, prior to that, was on the agency side at YNR for seven years and, and McKenna Erickson. So uh, leading a variety of different types of businesses. So super excited to be here today and, and to chat with you, Ryan. And awesome. uh, about me, sorry. Uh, I do have a five-year-old daughter, so uh, you'll hear me talk about her quite a bit. And uh, I live in New Jersey, and, and uh, my commute was uh, a little worse than yours coming from downstairs, but not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 11 years at Verizon. That's right. Uh, a lot has changed um, in that time. I can't even imagine. Maybe we'll get into a little bit about how your job has changed um, over that time. But uh, I guess the insertion of you know, or your world and technology, adding in, layering in data, um, you know, I, I would imagine your approach to everything you do is just a little bit different. Um, as you get into it, being a company that is not just a service provider, but also very much part and at the forefront of technology, you know, um, how are you leveraging that to make sure that you're getting to the consumers in a right way, sharing that type of technology and offering them you know, top, top service. Yeah, great. So if you think about the past 11 years and certainly, you know, the past 25 and for, for all of us who have been in the marketing industry a long time, data has profoundly changed how we do everything. And for me, I'm a student of, of marketing and I, I love to, to learn and transform the way we can deliver for our customers and really taking consumer insight and how we think about really complex business challenges, which we certainly have at Verizon, and, and really offer something to our customers that is unique. So we use data throughout the entire marketing uh, ecosystem and through our process. So that is from the development of, of a value proposition and, and leveraging inside of what matters to customers. And if you think about you know, our current offers that we have in market. So we just uh, launched Sunday Ticket. So that's the NFL Sunday Ticket for our customers. Customers know that we have a partnership with the NFL, but they wanna know what's in it for me? What am I gonna get as a Verizon customer? So having something like Sunday Ticket is born out of consumer insight and, and amazing partnerships with both uh, the NFL and YouTube and, and bringing that through to customers. And now um, with iPhone, it's an offer, which is, and this is not just a shameless plug for the any condition trade-in, but you think about what customers <laughs> Want, right? They say, like, I have this phone that's banged up, and I don't think that I could trade that in for a new phone. We want to make sure that we're at the heart of what matters to customers, and data allows us to do that, to make sure that we're coming up with the right value proposition, and then the right creative that's going to resonate. So I'm a big believer that, that creative can be born out of great data. So there's a lot of intuition. As we know, it is an art and science, but data helps us get to that right insight. And then certainly, as we think about the go-to-market. And as we think about digital and how to make sure that we're hitting the right person with the right offer and being able to be so segmented, we have a large customer base and they wanna know that we know them and we're serving up something that is relevant to them and that we're serving up the right products and services that meet their needs. So we really think about how we use data throughout the entire ecosystem and, and how we talk about things like network changes. So uh, when you talk about being a tech brand and, and really talking about our network, that, that changes and has changed certainly as you think about the last few years. Network during COVID, 
critically important to think about how we were connected to each other. So the way we talked about network then is different than we, how we talk about it now and how we talk about the differences between our, our networks and our, our competition, certainly. Hmm. Thank you. So we were just talking a minute ago about how important it is for speed, you know, not just the service, but also you to get a campaign up and running quickly, right? And data as a whole can sometimes kind of like get us all caught up pulled us into a different direction. Like, how has that slowed down, you know, your approach and how are you guys, you know, kind of making up for that? Yeah, I, I think about it as it might slow you down, but it slows you down to get faster. So to learn the insight and also to optimize as you go. And I think sometimes as marketers and certainly as creatives, we want to get something perfect out of the gate. But as you think about digital and, and you all know this is as you're able to optimize your message in market is so important. So we want to make sure that we're leveraging the right data to get it right at the outset, but knowing that we can modify, we can optimize, we can listen to customer insight to get to that right message. And again, as we think about segmentation, how do we make sure we're hitting the right people with the right message? So it, it might might take a little bit longer. I wish I had some of the CPG lead times that, that we just heard from uh, the previous speaker. We don't have that uh, on the telecom side, but we are able to leverage data to get it right and then to make sure that we're optimizing in market. So a little bit further on that, you saying get it right, right? So what does get it right look, look like for you guys and how do you know when you've you got it right? Yeah, and we use, uh, we use a lot of different factors as we look at our, our marketing campaigns. So it's everything from breakthrough, are people seeing our message, are they seeing our campaign, is it breaking through the clutter? Uh, we do, uh, our mix is, is heavily skewed on digital, but certainly we use linear in a, in a massive way. Uh, and we want to make sure that people are seeing it and that they, they care about our message. We use copy testing to ensure that it's the right message. Um, but really what we're focused on is business performance. Is it driving the right outcome for the business? Is it driving the right traffic? Are we driving the sales that we need? Because the marketing is really, we want to make sure that we're making a connection with customers and, and certainly we have our brand attributes, but we also want to make sure that marketing is at the end of the day, and at the end of the day, driving the sales overnight as we continue to build the brand over time. Great. So our companies have a pretty rich history of partnering through events, temples, social, all kinds of things. Um, Streaming has ch changed and evolved like our industry in a big way. Um, and now I think, in a, I think it all started at the root of cost, right? Everyone was like, God, everything's so expensive. How do we figure out? You guys are now bringing some offerings to the market now um, and creating these bundles almost in the way of, you know, how do we offer something to these guys? What, what was behind all of these bundles that you put together? And you know, mo most recently, you know, again, shameless plug, um, you know, your partnership with Netflix, you know, um, Paramount Plus and uh, Showtime. Absolutely. So, we all know streaming has changed the landscape, and certainly, a great partnership uh, with with Paramount Plus and. The network is critical to that, right? So if you think about just the way people use our network in different ways, streaming has catapulted the way uh, we need to serve up network for our customers. But our customers are at the center of everything that we do at Verizon, and I think every brand who sits up here is going to say that same thing. But one of the things we looked at is to say, as we think about streaming, it is... Uh, with all respect, a little complex when you think about the customer experience, because you have all these different ways that you are purchasing streaming services. And we saw from customers, they were confused. They're like, well, I'm paying for this, I'm paying for this, what can I watch on this? How do I really bring together and manage these subscriptions? My husband and I joke all the time, I'm like, are we both paying for the same thing? Should <laughs> we make sure that we're only paying for that once? And how do we look across the ecosystem? So we developed something called Plus Play, and that was with three marquee partners, as you said, Ryan, so Paramount Plus, uh, Netflix, and Showtime. And that's a way for our customers to manage their subscriptions and really manage and, and also provide value. So when you think about where you need to go to say, well, how much does Paramount Plus cost and what shows can I watch on it? This aggregates everything so that you can manage all of your subscriptions in one place. Now, that might not be something that you normally would think that Verizon would give you, but because we are in that space and because we negotiate these amazing deals with these incredible partners, we want to make sure that we're bringing that value to our customers. So I happen to have a video. Um, I always laugh that I was like, no, these aren't planned at all. But I do have a video of Plus Play that shows a little bit about the proposition, and I can talk a little bit about how we built the, the creative as well, if we can roll that video.
crew, we've arrived. It's just gonna change the world. All together now. All together now. All together now. All together now. The subscriptions you love are all together now. Introducing Plus Play from Verizon. Get subscriptions for less and pay all in one place. Now get one year of Netflix Premium on us. Only on Plus Play from Verizon. So who in this room has heard of Plus Play? All right, we've got a few. Good, good, of course. Good. But it is, so this is one, it is such a customer need. And so we launched that spot on the Oscars. And uh, what was exciting about that spot at Finding all of that content to get to all together now would have taken weeks, but we used Gen AI to, to find that content with our key partners. So between Netflix, Paramount Plus. So it's a great way to say the concept itself was not born out of AI, but the actual execution was and allowed us to get there far faster uh, and, and make sure that we're getting, because if, if anyone works with amazing content partners, you need to make sure that we are showing the right content that is in market at that time. So we were able to do that with AI to get there far faster and, and get to a great end product. But again, this is something that our customers need and have told us they need, and it's a space that we're in and a space that we can offer not only the value to aggregate the, the services, but the, the value that we can bring to our customers. So uh, another shameless plug, check it out because it's a great way to, to save on amazing streaming partners uh, yeah. like Paramount Plus. Consolidation is important. It is, it so, is. Um, it works out for everybody. Um, so another partnership you guys have is with the NFL, right? So every Sunday, you know, we've got an NFL partnership with uh, the CBS Halftime Show. You guys are, I, I've seen that commercial out there with um, Josh Allen, as you said before, in the Sunday ticket. Um, I got to imagine there's going to be some love around the Super Bowl um, on CBS in um, Vegas this year. But uh, that being said, as we've talked about, like that, that audience is super important to Verizon. It's not just sports, but it's also live events. And I know that there's a lot of infrastructure that you guys are building in a lot of these stadiums, et cetera. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you guys are doing with 5G to bring that and what the experience and how you are improving that experience for consumers? Absolutely. So linear, and, and as we think about TV, and, and we all know uh, from, from the seats that we all sit in, Live sports is so important as we think about the buys that we're making. So anyone who watches football, I, I know you've seen our spots or integrations. Uh, we we uh, are a big partner of the NFL because there are a lot of eyeballs on that content. But as you think about the in-stadium experience, now go back a few years, people were ha not having great network experiences. And if you're not on Verizon, you may still not be having a great network experience. <laughs> but it's people want to post. So initially, people wanted to text to say, where am I? I'm sort of here. Where are you in the stadium to friends? Now it's people want to stream. They want to FaceTime. They want to share the experience with people who are not there. We talk a lot about uh, the Taylor Swift Eras Tour. I mean, who's not talking about it? And especially connected to the NFL, which is just an exciting, uh, fun time with, with, uh, with Taylor and Kelsey. But anyway, uh, I digress. The Eras Tour was a great and amazing show. But if you think about the amount that was shared out, that was a shared experience for those who were in the stadium. But people now were able to post. People were able to share it. It was able to be amplified. And that's because of the network experience in stadiums. When you think about that number of people on the network at one time, we needed to build a lot of infrastructure into the stadiums. And we started this in 2019. And then everyone went home in 2020. So we needed to make sure while everyone uh, was home during the pandemic, we were out there building and building the network in stadiums. And now we're in 100 stadiums and arenas so that people can have that experience. People can share that experience. So whether you're at an NFL game, you want to share an incredible play, or if you want to check red zone because you are checking your fantasy football and want to make sure you know what's happening on another game, uh, that you can have those experiences. And for us, that's a different type of network that we need to build in stadium because it's it's a lot of people using the network at one time. So we want to make sure that that experience is consistent and that it's the same experience that you might have at home you can have in the stadium. So this is a strong partnership with the NFL, with the teams, because they want to, at, at first they were like, no, 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 who's going to be on their phone? They're only going to be watching the game. 
obviously that's not consumer behavior. We want people to be able to have the experience that they want. We want to meet the customer where they are. And that's why it's so important for us to build that out. So we've been building 5G ultra wideband in our stadiums. As I said, we're up to 100 to make sure that that's an incredible experience wherever you are, that you're having that, that strong experience in and out of the stadiums. That's great. So 5G, it's not, you can't touch it, right? Like you can work on your phone and you can experience it. How do you build that into your creative and do it in such an authentic way where people can fully understand how it's supposed to work for them? Yeah, it's, that's, it's an interesting one, right? Because we want people to understand the capacity and the density and what 5G will do. And uh, I know you're probably like, yeah, we don't care. And, and, <laughs> and people don't, right? They just want it to work. And they want anything that they're going to do to work and to be a seamless experience. And people would say like, well, there's gonna be a killer app for 5G. And to us, it's like the apps are killer. 5G is making the apps even better. It's making the streaming experience even better. It's making the experience that customers want to have, whether that's streaming, whether that's posting, no matter what you want to do on the network, we need to make sure that we're showing that it's better. And a few years ago with 5G, we talked about what was going to happen in the future. And it was about robotic surgery, and it's about how it's going to transform industry. And customers were like, okay, cool, cool. Then I'll, I'll wait until it, it matters to me. But today, again, it's about what matters in the every Every day? How do we make the experience every day matter? How do we make sure that you have the great experience when you're in Times Square or whether you're at a Jets game or whether you are at the Taylor Swift concert? We want to make sure that you're having that seamless experience every day. And, and that's, what fi that's what matters about 5G. It's not waiting for this amazing, uh, this amazing app to come out. The apps are there. The, the experiences are there. We want to make sure that the network is matching that experience and we're bringing our customers the best possible experience they can have. So Vegas is wired. That's right. I'm going to be sending selfies of myself to my family. It's there you go. go. It's going to immediately go through. And that should be your next commercial. It, it will immediately go through. So you think about the sphere. <laughs> so who, who saw, who has heard of the sphere? I'm in Vegas. All right, see, got to get that same hand raised for plus play. But uh, the sphere, same thing. <laughs> people wanted to post that experience. When that launched and that U2 experience was amazing. What do people want to do? It's like you don't even go if you don't post about it, right? So people want to share that experience. They want to share that they're there, want to share it with loved ones, and they want to have that network experience. We were there at the Sphere. We were the only network that was working as well at the Sphere. But Vegas is tricky, right? There's a lot of people. It's a really densely populated area, but we need to think about where people are going. So we're building at the next Super Bowl site years in advance of the Super Bowl because we know the amount of people who are coming. So that's everywhere, knowing where the fans will be gathered. You think about the stadiums, you think about that experience. So yes, you can uh, post and share the experiences that you will have in Vegas and uh, they will go through. It's exciting. America's most reliable 5G network. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so uh, changing gears, um, Verizon Innovation Learning Program, huge priority for you guys. Do you want to talk a little bit about it? Because um, I know there's probably most people, it's probably going to get the same type of hands you got um, for Plus Play. Uh, why don't we dig it into is, that a little bit? Unless you were here last year and you heard me talking about it. So uh, Verizon Innovative Learning. Has anyone heard of Verizon Innovative Learning? There you go, Warren. OK. So uh, as we think about what our uh, obligation and responsibility is, yes, we need to make the network experience incredible for all of the Swifties and all of the, the NFL fans. But we also think about what our responsibility is to society and to schools and to students and to really bridging the digital divide. And no one uh, can deny the importance of network when you think about COVID. When everyone moved to remote learning and how did they connect? They connected through the network. But before that, and we've been at this for now 11 years, we just had our 10 year anniversary and now we're in 11 years of Verizon Innovative Learning. And what that is, is we bring technology, network and curriculum to schools and to schools that don't have access to technology. How many of you have kids? Okay. Are you amazed by the technology in their schools and what they're learning and how they're learning? It's it's incredible to see how that shifted. There are many schools who don't have access to that same technology. And we believe it's our responsibility to bring that to schools and to help give these kids an opportunity to learn and to level the playing field and to bring that connectivity, bring that technology, but also the curriculum to the teachers who might have learned 
and, and done their studies 20 years ago? How do we make sure that they can learn to bring that technology and to see the impact that that has on the teachers, on the schools, on the full administration is incredible. So I'm gonna show another video of some of the impact because for us, it's about the impact that makes on the kids. And you think about 10 years later, what these kids who've had that experience are doing today, that's, what's, that's what lights us up. That's what gets us so excited about our brand and what the opportunity that, that the Verizon network can bring. So let's roll this. Manu was one of the first students in the Verizon Innovative Learning Program. It totally changed the culture of learning and it allowed students to become leaders. How many of you women are interested in a tech career? I always had that curious mind, but I never broke out of my shell. Today, I'm a senior at Temple University, majoring in information science and technology. To all the girls out there, the opportunities are endless. So this is one that we're just so proud of as, again, as you think about the impact and how we can bridge the digital divide. And we can't do that alone. I heard speakers earlier talking about partnerships and, and that's what's so important too. This is not just us saying we're gonna bridge the digital divide. This is an everyone problem. We need to make sure that students and, and these schools have access and access to the network and access to technology so that we can level the playing field and, and make sure that these students are getting the experience that they should have and, and as we build that across schools. Really so you're heavily involved in yeah. this um, program. Are there any like events or things you've been recently that like touched you and you were like, God, I really would not, would love to get more folks involved? Yeah, it's. I think getting into the schools is it has the most profound impact for for me and for my team. So we can talk about it and we learn from the students what they're able to do. But when you get in the actual schools and you see how teachers are using this technology and they are creating you know, ecosystems of what an earthquake impact would be and they're learning on CAD systems and things that in eighth grade blows my mind, the kids are able to do. And these teachers are lit up and the students are lit up. And that's when my team is like, how do we do more? So we, you know, it's a focus for us for the marketing team, but it's something that lights people up to say, this is something I wanna work on and something that we wanna make sure that the brand is touching and that we're sharing with others, not just to get credit to say, how are we building brand attribution, but because it's so important and we want to get more people involved. Awesome. So changing gears a little bit. Um, Verizon's been super successful in identifying talent, partnering with folks um, in a really, really strong way, like just truly like resonating with all different audiences across many demographics. Uh, most recently, you guys rolled out um, the J Balvin, you know, Spanish speaking creative for the iPhone. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and how it came about? Sure. Uh, so that's a, that's a big shift. So from Verizon Innovative Learning to, to our, our iPhone, sp yeah. iPhone spots again. But, it's, but it is, uh, for us, using talent is not, we don't use celebrity for celebrity's sake. It's how do we make sure that we're using uh, celebrity when it makes sense for the, the actual creative and, and the message we're trying to convey. And for iPhone, we need to break out of the clutter. There's a lot of other telecoms talking about iPhone, and we want to make sure that we are getting our message to stand out in a way that really connects and resonates with our customers. So for us, again, the promo is at the center, not just because it's about driving traffic, because customers care about that promo and saying any condition trade in, any, any iPhone that you have, so it could be an iPhone 5, you can then trade in. So people are saying, ah, this is cracked. I'm going to need to go get it fixed before I trade it in. So important for us to really convey that in a way that really breaks through. And with the Latino audience, it was the insight of a lot of the Latino audience that well, the, some of these offers, like all influencers are gonna get this deal first, right? So of course they can trade in anything and get anything. And we use Jay Balvin, who's an amazing partner and is huge right now. And to say, this is not just for influencers, this is for everyone. And, and using Jay Balvin in a way that really connects with our Latino customers, and this is in language, and using his trademark hair color, so uh, he dyed it in an amazing red, um, which we were very excited about, uh, and saying this, this amazing offer is for you. So leveraging his music to create that breakthrough, leveraging him, and we also used him 
we always do it. We did an, uh, an AR activation for pre-sale. So before the iPhone comes out, we did Catch My iPhone, which created J Balvin larger than life, and we used him for general market and for Latino to catch that excitement around iPhone and to, for people to learn the features and the benefits of the new phone. So it has been super successful for us. So we use J in, in both um, general market and Latino, and then also continue to use him. And then in our general market spot, um, we have our spot out now. So again, anyone who watches the NFL, and hopefully you've seen it. So uh, Jason Bateman and Sean Hayes. And, and the way we chose them is, you know, they're so culturally relevant right now with Smartless. So their podcast is amazing. They have great chemistry and they have amazing appeal crossing over demographics. So for many of us who, who know Jason Bateman for a myriad of shows throughout the years, you know, it, you think about his, his appeal for someone who's now streaming Arrested Development for the first time or someone who watches Ozarks and you think about Sean Hayes and, and what he's doing on Broadway and also, again, people who are streaming Will and Grace and having that experience for the first time. They are, uh, they're an incredible duo and to bring them and their chemistry on set was amazing and created an incredible spot. So it's about finding the right talent for the right moment that's really going to connect with customers and, and, and hit that right message versus using celebrity for celebrity's sake. Awesome. I mean, how long does that take from like, hey, we're gonna do this commercial now, who are we gonna bring in for this? Yeah. It depends, it depends. Uh, and, and we certainly start on, uh, on iPhone earlier. Again, I had some envy on CPG and their timelines. Ours are <laughs> definitely shorter than that. Uh, so it was really from, uh, I would say, developing between June and July. With iPhone, it's tricky because you don't get, we don't get our hands on the phone until Keynote. So when they announce the phone is when we're able to shoot. But we were able to shoot and get it on air the following week. So we had an editor on set who was saying, this is the right, you know, these are the right segments and these are the right clips um, and having Apple on set with us. So we, uh, we have to create the spot really quickly um, and really get that in market because we want to make sure that we're first to market. So it's, it's uh, the development takes a long time and to make sure that we're negotiating and getting the right talent at, at the right time. And then uh, the execution for this one was quicker, but um, usually have a little bit more time than a week. Do you leverage data for that? I know we internally we do a lot of social you know, influence campaigns and we have a proprietary system that allows us to showcase, okay, this is, these are the three right people for this. Like, how does that work for you guys? Absolutely. So we use data uh, across the board. So we certainly, as we think about the relevance of the talent that we're using, so um, first we'll look at, well, how do we look at their, their social handles? How do we look at engagement? How do we make sure the right brand fit? And how do we make sure there's no risk as we think about reputational risk? Um, and how do we make sure that they're, they're someone that our customers want? So we spend a lot of time, we do a a lot of uh, data screening to ensure that we're getting to the right person. And then we also look at, and, and oftentimes we're, we're evaluating three different you know, opportunities for talent at a time. And then we say, okay, who's rising to the top? What does that start to look like? And then we begin the negotiations. Getting it right is not easy. It is not. It is um, not. How are we on time? Should we go to questions? Do we have any questions for Kristen? I have a quick question. Sure. Um, you got a mic. Oh, sorry, thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I work actually at Paramount on Ryan's ah, team terrific. and uh, live and breathe the Verizon business. Ah, well, thank you. I can only imagine that coming the Super Bowl, you guys are going to have some sort of social influencer stunt up your sleeve. Now, we have a great content creation arm of our area, and I'm sure a lot of people in this room do too. Yeah. How do you guys evaluate opportunities outside of your direct partnership? which is strong already with the NFL. Just curious. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. And I think, uh, yes, to your first part, first part, of course, we will be thinking about an incredible social activation for, uh, for Super Bowl because that's where our customers are. And that's where you know, our brand is throughout the season. And we want to make sure that we're making that impact on the biggest stage. So we are evaluating opportunities with partners all the time. So if you guys have them, bring them. And we want to make sure that we're looking at what is the right partnerships for that right brief. So for us, it's all about what we're trying to create. So a lot of times we might get a great idea, but it's not the right time or the right messaging or the right fit for what we're doing. So I think how do we look at ideas and say, this might be right for this time period, or this might be right for another opportunity. But for us, where we try to be really clear on the brief of what we're trying to accomplish for Super Bowl, I'm not going to share what that is, uh, but it is saying like, this is our core and this 
is our focus because then we build all of our KPIs around that. So I do, we, we work with our partners all the time to say these are some of our bigger, you know, rocks that we're looking at and how do we make sure we're getting the best ideas from our partners, but we're always open to ideas and, and creation that we can co-create together because we don't believe we can go it alone and we, we need amazing partners like you in order to do that. Yeah? Sorry, sorry, I don't know if I'm supposed to just... No, go for it. <laughs> He had a good seat. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Stephen Elliott with Ratty. I, I mean, both, both uh, thank you to you both. And I loved how you said you're a student um, of marketing. If you wouldn't mind, would you share some of the sources? Like, where are you learning from? Because it's apparent. Uh, yeah. You, you're, you're definitely on top of all the trends and everything. Yeah, no, thank you. And uh, it's a myriad of sources. So I am constantly reading books on marketing while learning from my partners. I learned so much from our agency partners also, who we always have check-ins with our agencies to understand what ha what's happening from a trend perspective. Uh, so we work across many different agencies, but we have our core agencies and they, I look to them as our partners. And, and as I look at sort of our core um, executive committee team to say, what are, how do we think beyond our category? How do we ensure that we're looking beyond what we might think about within Basking Ridge, and that's where our headquarters are, so that we can look outside and understand the trends, what they might be learning from our other clients. Their other clients are so important for us to bring in. I think sometimes we're like, no, no, this is the way we do it at Verizon, but opening our, our, eye, our eyes to, to what's happening is really important, and using uh, our social channels. So I follow so many different marketing leaders to understand what they're doing at their brands and seeing what's happening in LinkedIn. What are they talking Talking about and and how do I make sure that I'm looking at everything from uh, CMO Today and Wall Street Journal to Deloitte? There's so much content out there that we can continue to learn. But I I learn across, but I also learn a ton from people, and just learning from people and keeping our eyes open to to what we should be doing and how we should be thinking about the business. Yeah. So we are unfortunately at time. Um, so I do want to thank yeah. Kristen for thank joining me up here, and uh, once again, all of you for joining us and your questions. Thank you. Thanks so much. Have a great day.